Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 270. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today because we are going to address something, something that is in the back of your head, something that has stopped you from moving forward and should not do so any longer. We're going to talk about a four-letter word, and I'm going to let that sit for a minute while you're thinking, like, what four-letter word is he going to bring up today? It's really, really simple. Here's the thing. I know you've said it. I know you've done battle with it, and I know you have friends who need to hear this one, too. So I'm going to specifically say, make sure that you're taking notes, because today, you're going to be able to overcome fear. Yes, that's the four-letter word that I'm talking about today, because today's guest has the ability to help you with it. In fact, the number one fear, believe it or not, more than death, is speaking in public. He's co-authored a book called Scared Speechless, Nine Ways to Overcome Your Fears and Captivate Your Audience. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, if you were trying to build your business, you realize you have to tell somebody. That's awesome and also frightening at the same time. Our guest, Steve Rohr, is a publicist, educator, and author. He's the founder and president of Lexicon Public Relations and was the show publicist for the 2016 Academy Awards. Now, I don't know about you, but I watched, and it was awesome. So let's welcome Steve Rohr. Steve, you there? Yes, I sure am. Thank you so much, Jay. What I'm a great introduction. Thank you. I'm glad that uh, you are here and lending your information, your talent, your time to helping us entrepreneurs figure this thing well, out. Well, like you said, Jay, if you want to tell your story, you have to open your mouth. You have to get out there and shake hands and, and network with people. But fear holds a lot of us back, especially when it comes to public speaking and public presentation. Not just you know getting up in front of some kind of official audience, but networking, interviewing, pitching your service. <laughs> You know, it goes right down the line. It's just getting up and talking. Indeed, indeed. Now, before we get too deep into things, one of the things I would love to do is to ask you the same question that I tend to ask everybody. So I I tend to look at today's... I didn't do it, Jay. Well, I don't know what you've heard. (laughs) Well, uh, well, you know, that's okay. What happened in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's that's all I know. Uh, (laughs) Exactly, right? So what what it comes down to is I I tend to look at... um, Today's entrepreneurs are a lot like yesterday's superheroes. So, you know, Batman, Robin, Green Arrow, what have you. And they all get up and and, and dress up occasionally and, and save people using their special skills. And entrepreneurs do the same thing. And just like those superheroes had a beginning, so do entrepreneurs. So do you. So before you were, you know, the publicist for the Academy of Awards, before you were, a, you know, an educator, an author, before the book, before all the things and, and people that you serve and help today, what we really want to know is who is Steve Rohr? Well, I'm actually Clark Kent. <laughs> yes, exactly. Love That's it. That's where it all began. Yeah. I will tell you, I'll tell you, Jay, I was pretty shy as a kid. I kept to myself. I nice. stayed in my room. I wasn't great about going out and meeting people. Not easy for me to make friends and certainly could never dream of getting up and speaking in front of a group of strangers or even people I knew. So I, I'm really, you know, one of those cases that you think, oh, this this guy's not, you know, he's not going to make it outside the house. <laughs> but public speaking was one of those avenues for me that allowed me to walk into this career. Huh. and. So I started acting in plays when I was a little kid. And that was, that was fun because I got to be somebody else. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to be myself talking. 
but it get, got me into the habit of, of getting up in front of other people. And then during high school, I got into competitive speech. And that's where you have to get up and give speeches to judges and mm. travel all over the state and, and, and really have that opportunity to, to fail a lot and to succeed a little. And if you're, you're lucky to succeed a lot. And then through college, continued to compete and you know, really kept opening doors for me all the way along. But if it, if it wasn't for that, that beginning of you know, getting up and speaking in front of people, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Interesting, interesting. Now, there's something I want to dig into because it, everybody has a first day. I've often told people every master was once a disaster. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it, I mean, I don't know any other way to get there. You know, it, it's through that process. So tell us about some of those first times where you yourself, like you, how do you go from just like being, I, I can relate to you. Let me put it this way. I, I didn't come from behind a computer screen for a long, long, long time. And people still have a hard time. Like if you can imagine if you've ever called tech support, like at night, uh, trying to get help. And this is back, obviously, when Windows and, and the Internet was still relatively new. If you can imagine trying to get help from the, the from the guy on the other end of the phone who's supposed to direct you to get back connected to the Internet and make your stuff work. That was me. Uh, because that was all I w would be willing to do is I was only willing to like work graveyard shifts. So I didn't have to talk to people and I'm supposed to be tech support, supporting people. It wasn't pretty. If you ever got me on the phone Wow. at well, all, you probably helped me along the way. And I appreciate it. So big thank you to you, Jay. <laughs> so are you, are you asking me if I've ever failed in my life? Well, I'm going to get to that one, but I want to know that I, not just how I, I assume failure was a part of this process, but more importantly, how did you get the courage? Because at some point you have to develop this courage to go, okay, that's not who I choose or wish to be anymore. You went over to competitive speech. That's that's a conscious decision to put yourself out there. And how did you develop that courage to make that happen? It was absolutely crazy. But I walked into this room of people who were, you know, it was the, the island of misfit toys. <laughs> you know, is everybody who's sort of like on the fringe. Right. Of high school society, which is 99% <laughs> of the people, right? I know, right? So I walked into this room, but there were all kinds and types of people there, but they all had one common thing. They were a little off in some way. And I thought, well, I'm home. Here's my tribe. <laughs> right. So I was excited to be there. And there was a lot of mentoring that happened. Number one, I felt like I belonged, which was wonderful because it made me feel safe. Number two, you, I had these you know, high school kids who were older and willing to even talk to me and help me get up some courage. And so I was able to see how it could be done. Mm. And I aspired to that because they were winning and they were being celebrated and they, they felt good about what they were doing and it gave them a lot of confidence. And I thought, well, I want this confidence too. So it took me a long time to get there though. It took me many, <laughs> many failures along the way where I just didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't connect with an audience. I was too scared. I was very nervous, you know, and then suddenly, you know, one day it turns a corner and you're up there, you're talking. Excellent. Excellent. And what I like about that is that there's, there's a process to it. Do you think anybody ever gets to skip that process? No. Good luck. Well, the people who are medicated, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they just don't care. <laughs> they just I'm don't care. Myself for another twenty years. You're so right. at that point, you know, it's you can't skip it. You you cannot you cannot become a great speaker without going through these trials and owning who you are and understanding what kind of power you have and distancing yourself from all the negative that surrounds you and actually being your best champion, being your best cheerleader. Indeed, indeed. You know, one of the things that I, I've I've learned, and I and I believe you you would agree. I, I would love to hear your thoughts because oftentimes when you're learning to speak or beginning to speak, we're so I I can get nervous. I still get nervous from time to time, but I've learned to use that. But more importantly, is it no one's hoping that I that I suck. It's, they're all hoping oh, no. I do well. No, no, <laughs> we th we think that the audience is going to judge us, right? And why do we think this? That's a good question. Why? Well because, well, because I judge people all day long. Do you? We all I judge see. people. I see. You think, well, my gosh, they're going to judge me right back. and Isn't that scary? But 
you are absolutely right, Jay. They're, they're not judging us in the way we think they are. And here's how we know. We know this because we all want to be entertained. So we never walk into a room where we're going to hear a speaker and, and think to ourselves, gee, I, I hope this speaker's terrible. <laughs> I hope this is the most boring two hours of my life that I will never, ever get back. Because that's what I need to be doing this afternoon. Instead of taking a nap or playing a video game or making some money, I just want to listen to this terrible speaker. No, that, that would never happen. <laughs> so we want to be entertained. So you know that the audience is looking forward to hearing from you and certainly wants you to be successful, interesting, entertaining, inspiring. We also know that the audience is on our side. If you've ever seen or heard a speaker who has blanked out mm. what the medical term for this is a brain fart. <laughs> yes. Technical term, Jay, so stay with me on this. I will. But I've got to spell it out first. Give me a if second. If you've ever heard a speaker and they're going along and, and they sound pretty good, and then suddenly this brain fart, they've forgotten their place. How are you feeling at that point, Jay? Um, you mean like yesterday? No. Uh, I, I, <laughs> there are times when, there are times where I'm like feeling embarrassed. There are times where I'm just like, oh, well, here's what happened, and let's well, just yeah, figure well, it out. You know, if it's, well, if it's another speaker, you're feeling very uncomfortable. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you and meant as the audience member. And embarrassment, and you really want them to get their place back because every second that they don't say something <laughs> – right. Is, is just really taxing you. And if you look around the audience, everybody in the audience is willing that speaker to get a hold of themselves and find the next thing to say. So that proves that the audience is on your side. The audience does not want to fail. If the audience wanted to fail, you know, they, they would be holding up signs, you know, 7.3, 6.4, <laughs> you know, they'd be voting you off an island. They're not. They want right. to be they want to be on your side because they want to be entertained and inspired. They might even so, have brought some tomatoes and rotten vegetables or yeah, something. No, yeah, no, the audience is on your side. The audience <laughs> wants to be there. Totally understood. So if this is the case, if that's really the truth, then why do you believe, why is it that the or we're so afraid of speaking in public, like more than death? I mean, it yeah, makes no well, sense, yeah. man. That's what, that's what our book talks about, Scared Speechless. Nine Ways to Overcome Your Fears and Captivate Your Audience is the very first book of its kind that explains the psychology mm. behind our fear, the why we're so scared, and then combines it with the how-to in a very sensible, accessible, easy way. We have never talked about fear itself. We just say, get over your fear, forget about the fear, lose your nerves. Well, nerves are good. Hmm. No, nerves are great, actually. Nerves are the way our, our body has protected us all of our lives. So we have this miraculous brain, and inside the brain we have something called the primitive brain. And this primitive brain is the body's natural defense department. So when we <laughs> encounter a perceived threat, it triggers that fight-or-flight response. So you were going to fight or you're going to get out of there. And it's good. It keeps us from wandering into traffic. It keeps us from walking down a dark alley at night. But the challenge here is that the primitive brain is primitive. It has not evolved the system in 300 million years <laughs> or so, give or take. Right? <laughs> but who's counting? So for the primitive brain, fear is one size fits all. In other words, it cannot tell the difference between walking down a dark alley or getting up in front of people and giving a presentation. It's the same thing. So it's going to trigger the same kind of response. That is, modern humans, you have to look around the room and say, wait a second, I, I'm not walking down an alley. I'm not being you know, devoured by a dinosaur here. I'm standing in front of other people. So you have to adapt and fill in the blanks where the primitive brain has it. So just understanding that the nerves are good, but the nerves are not telling you the whole story, the whole truth. 
Indeed, indeed. Now, I can hear someone who's listening right now saying to themselves, but but Steve, you don't understand. I, I'm trying to talk to this potential business partner and that man if if this deal goes through do you know do you know how much money i can do you know what that means for my for my for my family for my business this would be so so great i mean you don't understand these this these nerves steve you they got to go away help me make them go away they never go away either you do something with passion or you don't do it at all wow focus on what you're really talking about if this deal is that great focus on the deal don't focus on whether this person's going to respond to it in the way that you want them to. You can't control them. You can only control what you can control and you have to let the rest go. So you focus on your deal and how incredible it is and be passionate about that deal. And if you're not nervous walking to that meeting, there's something wrong because the stakes aren't high enough for you. Nice. You should be nervous. You should be nervous. Nice. And you're not looking for perfection here, Jay. Mm. People think we have to be perfect. Oh, it has to be perfect. Please don't be perfect. <laughs> oh, my gosh. If, if, if you've ever, met or ever seen someone give a perfect presentation, it's the most boring thing ever. It's like a robot. What you want to do is strive to be authentic. You want to strive to connect with the person you're speaking with. Perfection shouldn't be a goal. It should be authenticity. You should speak with your heart and your passion should show through because no matter what, that is going to be the most compelling thing for anybody listening. Always, hands down. Interesting. So how does one discover their, I'll say their authentic voice? I mean, in this particular case, I mean, they're scared to even open their mouth, let alone discover authenticity. Yeah. Well, the first thing is to realize that things will happen to you when you're nervous, physiological things. So when I get nervous, my mouth goes dry or my hands get very cold. Other people and people are listening and, and things, you know, happen in different ways. So your face might go beat red or you might start sweating like a big old pig. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Totally. 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 Okay. So these, these things happen to me. So every time I'm nervous, which is good. I want to be nervous because it means I'm passionate. Every time I'm nervous, my mouth goes dry. My hands go cold every single time. So when it happens, I notice it. And the first thing I say is, of course. Huh. You must expect the expected. Huh. Because inevitably, when these things happen, it stops somebody. It's, it stops people because they think, oh my gosh, I'm sweating. Well, of course you're sweating. You sweat every single time. Why are you so surprised? You just have to accept it. And I laugh. I'm like, of course, my body is, I guess, I guess everything's working. I guess the nerves are working. I guess my survival mechanism is working because my hands are cold. My hands are cold right now, Jay. (laughs) I am excited about this interview. I'm passionate about being here. I'm passionate about sharing with people you know, what what I care about. So I'm nervous. Good for me. My body's working. Right, right. And and I'm just, I'm just thinking about like, I can remember one of my first sales calls ever, my fingernails. Uh, You want to talk about my hands being cold? The tips of my fingernails turned purple because there was just no, there was just no blood there. It was that, it was gone, man. I was afraid. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but that's exactly where I was. And the the thing that I like about what you just said, though, is because I, I work with, the, you know, entrepreneurs, a lot of them, when they get close to that point, when they start to feel those things, they normal they normally back away from them. Right. But, and you're saying not to do that. Absolutely not. It's natural. Nerves are natural. We're programmed to panic. So when that happens, just go, OK, cool. This is happening. This is happening. And you can't adapt. So I know my mouth goes dry. So before we started chatting today, I made sure I had water here. (laughs) And when I go on television interviews, I always have a lozenge in my mouth. So if you ever watch me on TV, I'm giving away a little secret here. Oh, this is good. At the very beginning of the interview, you'll see me do a little crunch. Hmm. (laughs) Because inevitably, that lozenge is not. (laughs) <laughs> it's not solved you know, by the time that red light comes on. And I'm 
thinking, oh, well, either I can just suck on this lozenge or I can crunch it up. And right. so you'll see that if you go back and look at any of these interviews and almost every interview, I can see it happening, right? But That's I always funny. have a lozenge. Why? Because my mouth goes dry. Big deal. Big deal. It's not that I, you know, I'm going to back down now. Are you kidding me? Right. Like well, just a natural resp- body's response. I'm going to handle it. Well, the, and that this is here's what I like about this a lot because I hopefully people are, are taking. I mean, I know the kids are there. I know you're on the treadmill. I know you're walking the dog, but ho- hopefully you're hearing what you need to hear because this is key. You're basically reprogramming what is a natural response or natural reaction and training yourself to respond in a completely different way than what you would normally do and so that you can achieve the results that you're after. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, so here's something I want you to write down. Yeah, I know. You're on the treadmill. (laughs) I get it, I get it, I get it. Well, you'll be able to replay this as many times as you'd like. Oftentimes, here's the thing. Fear, we let it stop us. I'm going to ask you to let it start you, to let it start you thinking differently, to let it be the clue and start to become the thing that you are looking for. More importantly, forward to that tells you you are moving in the correct direction. Here's what I'm going to do. I know a number of you, uh, you like to read books. I've got one cash flow diary, 10 steps to creating wealth in any economy, and you can get a free copy. I'll send you a PDF copy. Just go over to cash flow diary dot com forward slash free book cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book i'll send you a free pdf copy right now or if you'd like you can get a audio book of the same now after you go to the same website it will be a special offer for the audio book and you'll be able to pick it up that way here's the point do something don't let fear any longer stop you Let's get back to the interview. That's exactly right. You just need to adapt. You're modern, sensible. You're a grown-up person. Right? You're not being <laughs> right. by a tiger. You're pitching some dude, you know, something really cool. All right. Big deal. Right. Big deal. Right. You know, and, and people say, well, how can you go on television and, and know that there are a million people watching? Who cares? <laughs> I try not to think TV. about it. I I'm would. not doing heart surgery. If I were doing heart Ooh. surgery, I could be a bit of more, you know, anxious, right? It's only right. TV. It's TV. And I also care about what I'm doing. And I also, Jay, I stretch out. I warm up. Like physically? public speaking is a, is a physical activity. Like physically stretch? Like a Absolutely. Stretching? Not oh. only just okay. warm up your mouth, but I uh-huh. stretch out like I'm going for a run. Now, I never go on that run, Jay. I'm not going to huh. lie to you. I'm not gonna <laughs> but I, I do stretch out because your body starts to freeze up, huh. tense up. So if you tell your body, hey, look, man, something is going to happen here. <laughs> All right. You're going to yeah. be in front of some people yeah. just giving you a little heads up. Right. By the time you're starting to freeze up, your body's already warmed up, ready to go. Interesting. And just is a, is a great way to start. The other thing that I do is I do a power stance. It's the Wonder Woman stance. It's the Superman stance. Back to yours. Oh, gotcha. Right? Okay, okay. Yes. You you really you put your your hands right on your the sides on your hips and you throw your shoulders back and you stick your chest out and you stand there for a couple of minutes and you just stand there in a powerful way because what happens when we go into these situations where we're feeling pretty vulnerable. Hmm. It's like you said, we're pitching something. This could mean food on the table for my family. It could mean paying the mortgage. It could mean an incredible opportunity for my future. So that tends to make us feel very vulnerable. And so our body starts to cave in and feel very small. So our shoulders will sort of cave in and we'll all, our entire body starts to collapse. But what happens with this power stance is that it tells your body, no, uh, 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 we're going in there. We're, we're powerful. Hmm. A lot of what we know is that we, we think that the, the brain informs the body, and it does. But the body also informs the brain. The body can send signals to the brain that things are going to be okay. And this is an exercise I do. Whenever I have to go someplace, I just I do not want to. I don't want to go there. Mm. Usually the gym. And I'm thinking <laughs> where I you can, do the stretching for the run you don't take, right? Yeah. Right. I got can it. either sit here and watch Game of Thrones, 
What, or right. I can get my butt off the couch and get to the gym. Wow. I, that's a decision. That's yeah, a decision a, for you. Okay. Decision, right? <laughs> so then uh, in the car on the way, I will start grinning. I hmm. will force a smile. I will smile like a freak. Hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you don't want to look around at other cars because those <laughs> <laughs> that would be you funny. start smiling like a freak and by the time you get to your place that you're going the gym in this case i'm either i've either cracked myself up because i'm so ridiculous <laughs> or i'm genuinely smiling because my body has informed my mind my body has informed my mind That's and i'm in a much better mood and we know we know this works so instead of collapsing your body or tensing up, try smiling, expanding your body, standing up straight and in your full power. And you will change the way you're thinking about the experience that's coming in the future. Okay. So as you're talking, here's something that's going through my head. I'm like, all right, everything that you're laying out has absolutely nothing to do with, you know, any sort of, well, call it natural talent in any way, shape, or form. Yet, many of us have been exposed to, seen, heard, and, and, you know, very talented, charismatic individuals. So the question becomes is, can anyone become good at this public speaking thing? Absolutely. Great speakers are made. Hmm. They're not born. Public speaking is the great equalizer. Now, some people could could have a natural facility for public speaking. I'm not saying that that's not true. Okay. Sure. But anybody, anybody can get up and give a speech if they work towards it and allow themselves to to experience it and to fail and to succeed. You know, anybody can do it. It's the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you were born, what color you are how much money you have, anybody can become a great speaker. I am living proof. I'm a living, <laughs> living proof. And I've seen it. I've coached it. I've coached people who've had no experience whatsoever. And in this case, I was coaching kids in college. Mm. No public speaking experience go on to be national champions. And in business, I've seen people who have just been scared out of their freaking mind <laughs> who've gone on to be very successful in business. And it's because they wanted it. Now, I can't do the work for them. They have to do the work and they have to want it. But you can never become a worse speaker. That is the secret. If you do it once, you get 100% better the second time you do it. And every time you do it, you get 100% better. You can never get worse. Huh. Hear me. You can never get worse as a public speaker. So every time you give a speech, you get better and you can never get worse. What else in the world works like that? Nothing else in the world works like that. I've but never it is thought absolutely about it. true. I've just never thought about it that way. It's, it's interesting that you say that. I'm sitting here thinking uh, for, for those of you who have ever listened to podcast or episode number one, you know exactly what he's talking about right now, because if you go from one to where we are today, you will go, wow, I didn't get worse. <laughs> so, you can't get worse. It's a How do you get worse as a public speaker? I never thought about it. That, that's what I'm like. That I'm actually excited. Like, wow, that's a that's something I've never thought about that, you know, uh, that actually happens for people. It's like, how do you you that's one of those like, how do you go backwards on that? No, one? Even if you try to be worse, that means you're trying to be worse. <laughs> that means you have some kind of awareness of how bad you need to be. Yeah. It's impossible to get worse. So that's why people need to get up and start talking because they will only get better. Okay, okay. So here we are then. Let's pretend that the, the individual who is um, listening right now, they, they're ready to start their business. They're, they want to make it happen. How do they – what do they got to do? Because you, you mentioned practice and you mentioned failing, which is a word most people don't even want to hear, let alone volunteer for. So how, what do they got to do to begin to – to get better, like, is there, uh, what, what's step number one? Well, step one, number one is to get that voice out of your head. Oh. Okay, it's that inner critic. It's yeah. that voice that says, you can't do this. Who, who do you think you are? 
Oh, you think you're going to do this now? There are people who are smarter and better and faster and prettier and more handsome than you are. So just forget it. It's that inner critic in our head. And again, this is the primitive brain, hard at work, because if you start taking risks, you could walk outside and get trampled by a woolly mammoth. (laughs) Right. So the closer you get to something that is threatening for the primitive brain, the louder and more obnoxious that voice is going to become. It's going to get, it's going to go into a screeching mode because it has to, because it thinks you're going to die. So you need to shut it up. You need to shut it up. And I have gotten to the point where I've had to yell back at it. Huh. Now, again, don't look around or people are going to be crazy. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Don't do it when your girlfriend's there because I'm just, I'm telling you, not, not so good. Not good. So you have to just scream back at it and say, look. You need to leave me alone right now. I get you're trying to save my life. That's cool. I appreciate that. But you need to leave right now. You can go back tomorrow so you can negotiate it with it, right? You can go back tomorrow. That's cool. But I have things to do. And it doesn't involve you. You have to get rid of that inner critic immediately. It's interesting. Make it go away. The second thing you need to do is you need to curb your negative self-talk. That's how we talk to ourselves. We talk to ourselves all day long. And researchers will say that talking to ourselves is actually great because we're teaching ourselves things. But Jay, unfortunately, a lot of what we're teaching ourselves when we talk to ourselves is negative. Right. Girls, ladies, you do this all day long. I'm so fat. Look at me. I'm fat. 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 It's just like, you know, (laughs) broken record. Guys do this too. I'm such an idiot. How many times do guys say, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot? Well, guess what? You're teaching yourself that. You're teaching yourself that. So the last thing that you need Mm -hmm. is to tell yourself that you're no good, that you're an idiot, that people are going to laugh at you before you go out and do something that is so mm, powerful as giving a presentation. Right. So you need to stop. And people say, well, Steve, I don't know how to stop. I don't know how to make myself... No, you know, not say those things. I say, well, it's easy. You just stop. <laughs> and here's the challenge. So tomorrow, yeah, or the next day, the moment something negative about yourself starts coming out of your mouth, you catch it. You catch it in your hand. You stop it, and you just put it away. Now you can replace it with something positive. No, but you are pretty, Steve. Or you just stop, and then. You have to notice how you feel. Hmm. How are you feeling? And I bet you feel like you're in control. And that's exactly how you need to feel when you're pitching, when you're speaking, when you're connecting with other people. In control. So imagining them naked isn't going to help at this point is what you're saying. It helps in some ways. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Got it. Got it. Got it. I was... Just trying to figure it out. I've heard this a lot, right? Imagine your audience naked. And I just think it's the silliest thing ever. Uh, Number one, are are we teaching our children to imagine people naked? Uh, Right. And where where do we draw the line, really? Like in the elevator, in the classroom, at the public library, where do we stop imagining people naked? So let's not do that. And it also distances us from our audience, which is the opposite of what we need to be doing. We need to be engaging with our audience. And if somehow we now see them naked, uh, that's, it's just creepy. Let's just leave it at that. Right? (laughs) Yes, let's do that. Here's a, I guess, a different way of looking at this. If, of the skill sets required to, to building a, a successful business, cash flow, being an entrepreneur, um, it, Do you think instead of learning to say speak in public, I mean, especially with today's mediums, we have so many different ways to communicate. Do can I can I avoid this by just, you know, learning to to make social media posts and blog and not talk to people? Is that do you what do you social media is amazing? There's no question, and it's changed the entire way that we do business and communicate with each other, but nothing, nothing sells your business more than yourself. And, and we know this because if you're applying for a job and we all apply for jobs and you send in your resume and 10,000 people send in their resume 
It's a sheet of paper or mm-hmm. it's an electronic, you know, clipping. But if you go and meet that person face to face, that resume suddenly becomes alive and there's a face to the resume. And that's why so many people get jobs through networking mm. and they get jobs that are not even posted because we hire people we meet, we hire people we like. And we also miss out on a lot of the cues we can get from other people that involve nonverbal tells and cues. We, and just being able to relate to people right. and see their face and see their reaction. It's such a valuable thing. And it's also pretty enjoyable, believe it or not. It's okay to meet new people and to get up to know other people. And one of the ways that you can do that if you are just scared out of your mind. <laughs> Say you've got a big networking event coming up. And look, I don't like walking in a room where I have to network. That's not my favorite thing to do. It makes me nervous, makes me a little crazy. Yeah. And, but you got to do it sometimes. Right. So, number one, you smile like a freak on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can also practice outside the room. And, it becomes, it makes your life so much more interesting, Jay. And what I mean by practices, you know, when you talk to the Uber driver, hey, where, man, where are you from? Oh, you have a family? man. That's when you funny. talk to somebody who opens the door for you, when you talk to that person who's uh, parking your car, mm-hmm. when you talk to the person, the dry cleaner, when you talk out to the checkout girl, hey, how many years have you worked here? Uh, they, you know, well, they, you know, they lucked out getting you, you know, and you learn so much about other people. And it becomes easier to connect with people. And it's just asking questions because a lot of times, you know, we ignore so many people who make our lives so much better. And we ignore people who we might see every single day. Custodians. Custodians know everything. (laughs) (laughs) But we just ignore custodians. We ignore them. But custodians are the ones who say, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, Linda's Linda's leaving. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Or, you know, they were talking about you and da 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 da. Or they go through the trash. They know everything, right? Because people just talk around them and they, because they're invisible. But custodians know everything. And it's something human about seeing another person and connecting with another person. And it just, it makes life more interesting. But you get in the habit of being curious about other people. And get in the habit of, of chatting with people. And by the time you get into a room, there you are. And, and look, it's not just about your business. When you walk into network with people, you don't have to focus on, well, I need to sell this product. <laughs> you walk in to ask questions, get to know people. I've done business deals where I've just talked about somebody's cat for 45 minutes. And at the end of the meeting, they're like, oh, we're, we're good to go. We just talked about her cat. Yeah. But she got to know who I was as a person and I got to know who she was as a person. And look, I like cats. So we were able to connect. We were able to to bond. And people want to work with people they like. You know, you can teach skills to anybody. You can have them help you in, in, you know, all kinds of ways. But you but you really need to like them. It would help to make, you know, go to ask questions, ask questions. That's all you have to do. Indeed. Indeed. Now, I know there's a number of people right now who are like, well, maybe Steve can help me uh, because they they want to be better than what they currently are. They want to understand more and they want to just figure out to get to that next level. What would be the best way for them to to catch up with you, to find out what you've got going on and make sure that they continue this conversation more than inside their head, but outside. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I do a lot of private Skype coaching. It's one thing that's really very enjoyable for me. I also speak all over the country and I like to visit different markets, but you can follow me on Twitter at real Steve Rohr. That's R E A L Steve S T E V E R O H like our hotel R at Real Steve Rohr. You can also link in with me, connect with me there. You can also visit our website, drshirleyandsteve.com, Dr. D-R, shirleyandsteve.com. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about public speaking and what we're talking about with nerves and the audience and how women make 
mistakes in public speaking. There's a whole bunch of information about that in our new book, Scared Speechless, which is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and wherever fine books are sold. Nice. Fine books. These are the things before Kindle, by the way, just for those of you who yeah, are books. wondering. Hey, but you also Kindle. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We are at, which, what's very interesting, Jay, and I, just quickly, I know we have to wrap, but look, I, I was shocked at the response that, we, that we've been having in regard to public speaking. I knew it was a big fear. I didn't know that so many people would right. be so eager to chat with us about it. And, you know, it was a Amazon number one bestseller and the hot new release in both Canada and the U.S. And it's shocking to me, but I'm glad I'm glad to be here. It's something that changed my life and I know it can change yours. I, I concur with all of those things. I mean, I try to tell people time and again uh, that I too am naturally introverted, naturally shy, did almost did not. This huge show now. <laughs> it, well, the, it, and that's the thing. It almost didn't happen because I was afraid to like, who's going to listen? What are they going to say? What do I have to say? How on earth am I going to find people to talk to? And uh, yeah, there was just so many questions and doubts and like what happens when, not if, but when I mess up, they're going to hear it. Ah, You're so authentic and you're so true to your audience and who you believe in. There's so many people listening right now who I'm sure you've helped along the way. And it's because it, it's a selfless thing. Yeah. And you can hear it in your voice and you can hear it in the way you present the information. And it, it certainly makes me feel more comfortable. And, you know, you don't need to be perfect. Please don't be perfect. Uh, yes, yes, I, I heard that. And hopefully you did too. Now, Steve, as we come in for a landing here, I got a final question for you. So let's pretend for a second that that one someone is standing in front of the superhero outfit store like they are ready to go in pick out their outfit <laughs> become that superhero entrepreneur and make this thing happen you alluded to it earlier and i'm going to change it up just a little bit but however they're they're thinking you know cape no cape tights i don't know uh but they're ready to go but they they do they have that voice that voice is there it's loud it's present you have done battle with it steve it is a friend and foe depending on the time of day and let's pretend for a second that you knew 100% that they were going to do within the next 72 hours whatever you said that they needed to do what would you tell him or her to do right now walk into the fear Take a risk. Take a risk. There have been studies done, numerous studies with older folks or seniors, and they said, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you regret most in your life? And the women all said, well, I, I regret doing housework, quite frankly. And <laughs> <laughs> their number two regret was also the the men's regret, which was not taking risks because you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. If you don't get what you go for, you haven't lost it because you didn't have it in the first place. And when are you going to start showing up for yourself? When? Tomorrow? When you're 50? When you're 75? When you're 100? When do you show up for yourself? You need to walk into the fear and you need to go find your destiny. I always say all of us, each of us has a rendezvous with destiny. And what is a rendezvous? It is a meeting. And all you need to do is get to your meeting. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I definitely appreciate you taking the time uh, to invest and to sow some great seeds here that I know went far and wide and will produce some fruit and, and return and maybe give that person the, what it is that they needed to hear in order to go out there and, and be awesome. So thank you for that, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Jay. I really love being on the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean today? It means you probably need to go pick up a book, don't you? Because you know you've thought about the fact that, hey, I would love to be better at speaking in public. I would love to be able to talk to more investors. I'd, be, I'd love to be able to get my idea, my widget. I've got this great idea, but nobody knows about it. Well, you know what you need to do. Start. Everybody feels afraid. That just means you're like everybody else. Every master was once a disaster, and that also means you, too, can become a master because you might be a disaster today. Nonetheless, 
It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. <laughs>